Welcome to my episode. We're heading to Fly House to pick up a big spool of number two wire. Gonna be meeting Telus there. But first, I gotta stop at one place. By the end of this video, every single thing you need to know to pull wire. We're gonna be using a special machine to pull the wire through, but this can also be done. But the techniques used in this video can also be done by hand if it's a short enough, easy enough pull. An emergency proclamation to change all exterior commercial lighting from white color to eerie yellow. We're gonna put the wire puller on the van. Tell us is gonna be here soon. We're gonna put the spool on his truck. Oh, thanks. They're already uncomfortable, but maybe it's just, maybe they just need to be broken. Just grab them. Oh my God, this is even smaller than it looked in the picture. This right here is like a six inch gutter. And we have our two inch coming in here. So I can tell you one thing, we won't be pulling from this gutter. We're more, more than likely gonna be feeding. This junction box might be a little bit below the minimum code requirement for junction box sizes. Crazy. Basically, we have this gate load center that is fed all the way from the house, about 600 feet away. We need to upsize the feeder from number six to number two because we're going to be adding additional branch circuits from this to a buffer tank over here. There's where we're pulling to. There's where we're pulling from. We have several pull boxes along the way that are hopefully gonna make this a breeze. Our gate panel is fed from this 50 amp breaker, which means right now I believe it's a uh, six gauge wire going all the way over to there. But we're gonna be adding additional branch circuits from that load center down there to our new buffer tank system, which means that the feeder needs to be upsized. So that's why we're pulling out the old and replacing it with number two. Well, the main reason is because of voltage drop, not necessarily opacity. The property manager said that if we want to use this, it's 50% charged. Yeah, okay, so that's there. probably where the run goes. Cause look at, come down over here. There's one right here. We have that, but I think that's utility. Oh, and then we have here. these right here. Now we're going to want to open them all up. So here's our plan. I want Jaden to, um, to go and open up all the handholes, gutters, low center, we all do this one because it is live. One thing we need to do is we need to get the gate open and then shut it off so that it's just stuck in the open position. All right, no donuts. There he goes, off into the distance. <laughs> Let me get this thing out of here. Okay, rule number one, always make sure it's turned off. The service, the main service disconnect is turned off right now. This place has no power so that we can touch everything. We're gonna disconnect the wire there. We're gonna find a pull point somewhere in the middle. Or we're just gonna pull out the whole wire and lay it out on the field. And then when we're done pulling this one in, we're gonna load the old wire back up onto this spool. Hopefully there's not a splice in every handhole because I'd like it if we had a nice long feeder of wire left over after the end of this. Not like we would ever sell wire that's been in a hole already to a customer. We'd never do that. Hill's a hill. Okay. Okay, Here, here's our feeder. Remember, not this yellow stuff. This is data. Here's our feeder in here. Now see how close these are together, which will make it a little bit hard to pull out, but if we're using the tugger on one end, it'll make it a straight through. Mm -hmm. But we might find that this is the location we kind of pull the middle out. Oh, let's see. Looks like Jaden's getting the gate open over there. Let's see if he knows how to stop it from closing. Yeah, okay. he's getting too comfortable on that thing. All right, let's try again, shall we? How did you open it the first time? Well, the first time was with this thing. Oh, there's a code right here, so we can punch yeah. in the code. Let's find, did you find the breaker for it? I have an idea, go ahead and open it. We're gonna pull all this wire out of the conduit, but first we're gonna attach a meal tape. If you are pulling wire, you need a string or a rope through the conduit. If you don't have any rope in your conduit, then you need to use a vacuum and a pull string, which we're not really gonna cover in this video. Okay. Let's see, just for fun, let's make sure that there isn't something really bizarre going on. Yep. <laughs> like it's the wrong feeder or something. All right, Jaden, here we go.
All right, gloves, go for it. It's super easy. Oh man, I wonder if a tree like grew into the conduit. That would be good. Yeah, hopefully that doesn't make our job harder. Okay, so this area is spliced. We'll just cut it here. We'll tie this on and we'll continue to pull it all the way through until we have a rope through the whole entire conduit. Moving on to the next one. Okay, so this is all totally off now. And although you should never trust these to your life, sometimes I just, if I know something's off, I just like to superstitiously check it to make sure it doesn't give any weird beeps. <laughs> Thanks. You guys sound like NPCs over there. You sound like an NPC. <laughs> you sound like Grand Theft Auto NPCs. You're just like, get, get the hell out of my face. <laughs> the other um, handhold. Okay, so now we're at the opposite side here in this tiny little gutter. We're going to get meal tape in here, then we're going to tie the meal tapes at the center. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, here, I'll hop in too. I'll ride on the back. Why not? God, I love this thing. Okay, so we have all our meal tape pulled into this middle point. We're going to tie the two together with a strong knot. And I got a super special task for the boys. I have some special tasks for you guys. Varying in levels of glory, dependent on your current skill level in the electrical trade. Jaden, I need you to go to each handhole with your electrician's shovel. That's your hammer and clean out, like scrape out the pathway between the two conduits. Oh, okay. I want you to make like a little mini trench almost and just like clean it up. You could use rags, clean it up so that y there's probably a ton of dirt and stuff in the conduits already. But when we're pulling our number two through, I want it to go through without like rubbing against, rubbing against but also like sucking in a ton of dirt. So if you just create this, so there's a clear path from both sides. Tell us, you on the other hand, I want you to get this wire a little bit more prepped. And by that, I mean kind of lay it out in the lawn. So I want it to be the two reds, the green, you know, the number 10 green and the white. And I want you, we don't, we're not cleaning them up yet and we're not spooling them up yet, but I want you to at least just like pull them across the yard so it's like very clear of what's what and it's not tangled up. So these are just time suckers for you guys to do in the meantime while I get this prepped and while we, I get the pulling head prepped. I'll cut off a little bit of the excess here. Maybe I'll even tape it up just for good measure. Okay, while the, while the apprentice are helping me prep stuff, let's get our wire head prepped because we're about ready to pull this thing. To summarize, we're pulling to there from all the way across the yard through about three handholes each one of which is a straight pass through. So my theory is that we can pull with our machine the whole thing straight through without having to use pull points. We have our two hots and our neutral and our ground. Pretty common for a residential wire pull. Now what we're gonna do is, I made this loop here by basically just going like that and tying one big granny knot. This thing's not coming undone. This is gonna be where we attach our pulling head because we wanna taper these wires so that they kind of like, so they taper along the wire head, giving it a nice point to it and so that it's smooth. So we'll start with the black. <clears throat> we'll do, let's do it nice and generous. So let's do three shakas worth on the black. And I'm going to strip back this whole portion of wire. We're going to trim it off. These wires are all going to be attached pretty much independently from each other. I think that's the best method. Okay. So we have that like that. 
And then Jaden, just to catch you up, we're taking half the strands off. See how I took half the strands off and unravel them so that the wire is half as wide. Oh, oh okay. Well, we're about to take lunch and then we're about to pull the wire in. And depending on how long that takes us, we also, yeah. well, we need to pull the wire and then we also need to spool up the old wire. So we'll probably be, yeah. you know, like all day. We're just about to get to the action here. Before we do that, if you guys haven't already, please like the video and subscribe if you like my content. But more importantly, comment. Let me know your thoughts. Would you do things differently? What did you think of that pulling head? Anyways, I hope you enjoy these videos as much as I enjoy creating them. This is wire lube, and I bet you're wondering what the difference is between the two. And so am I, because I have no clue. But we're gonna be using one of these. Clear or yellow? Which one should we use? Clear or yellow? Let's think of who's gonna go where. Now I'm going to have Telus feed this in because I trust him more with this sharp edge here. You see this sharp edge, Telus, down here? Yeah. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull, but try to make it come through that way, if that makes any sense. But ultimately, there's not a lot of room, so we're just going to have to go really slow. And I want you to take a rag or, or nitrile gloves or something, and I want you to add wire lube to the wire as we go. And maybe, maybe one of you can take one of these. Jaden, which one do you want? Clear or yellow? Doesn't matter to me. Just... No? Well, pick one. Clear. I'm, I'm, clear. <laughs> I'm telling you. Does the clear one have a smell? Oh. Hmm. They both have a smell. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. If the clear one didn't smell as much as the yellow one, I'd want the clear one. <laughs> no, I'm taking the clear. Yellow one's... Okay, Jaden's got the clear. Here you go. I think based on... The fact that it's it's a really clear path, and since it's such small wire, I think you could probably handle it on your own over here, tell us. Just like pulling it straight off. If you can't, then let me know, and we'll readjust. Let's start by getting the slack in, and then just you can have a feel of... Okay. Here we go. Um. What? Okay, where we are right now, we might set up the tugger. Ooh, excuse me. We might set up the tugger, but the thing is, it's really crowded in that panel, and it's gonna be a lot of work to actually move all the wires out of the way to fit the tugger in. I think what we should do is we should go midway in the run somewhere, you know, not like the first handhold, but maybe the second one, and see if we can just pull a majority of it by hand. So the thing is, we have three guys here today. So what we could do is we could have one person feeding in here. We could have one person pulling slack at another area and we could have another person pulling at the final destination in between uh, communication. If done correctly, it's not a hard task. When you're pulling wire, always use proper body mechanics or you'll really mess yourself up. Okay, so we're at the midpoint of our conduit. We've pulled the whole of this side out onto the grass. Now you may not always have the luxury of having a big field of grass. If it's on concrete or gravel, you might not want to drag the wire across it. So in that case, you would pull out like 30 feet at a time and then you would have another guy on the other end probably pulling more as you go so that you only have a bit of a loop at the same time. Or you could figure eight it where you're kind of like laying it down, laying it down. Now we're gonna take the end, we're gonna shove it in here, we're gonna shove a bunch of lube in there, we're gonna pull it to the end. I think we went a little too crazy on the golf cart. It's out of battery now. <laughs> we pushed it, or uh, we pushed it until it was out of batteries. Now we gotta walk everywhere. Okay, so we're just about ready to pull the second half of our wire. 
it can help to zigzag it on the ground like that so that there's less friction while you're going. And then I'm gonna be over there and we're gonna pull it in. Now this is a shorter distance from here to there than it was to there, or so it looks like. So hopefully this will be a little bit easier. And because there's no weird angle like there was with that gutter, I think we should be able to pull at a faster pace. But, you know, I also might just be jinxing it, so. The official reason that I'm not using the tugger in this case is just, the tugger is a huge tool and it's for big wire. And unfortunately, the head physically wouldn't fit in the panel if I tried to put it in there. So that's why early in the day, I just decided not to use it because I could just tell it wasn't worth trying to set it up. So we're going through here. We have one handhole there that we're gonna be skipping and then passing right through, I should say. And here we go. Just to reiterate, this is a, this panel is shut off. You should never pull into a live panel unless you have the proper safety gear like a 12 or 40 cal suit, depending on. Yep, so one of the things about pulling the whole spool of pre-measured wire through um, all the way up to the end on one side is you might pull more wire to the end than you need. The goal is not to pull an inch more wire than you actually need. In this case, it's not a big deal, but we did pull maybe 10 more feet than we needed. The way to prevent this is just, like I said, if you have one pull going on, and then you have the second one fed in, and then you're kind of running back and forth. So it's give or take. So three tips. The lube really helps, for one. Use plenty of lube, it's cheap. It's easy to add it into the conduit. Second, pull points. Use your pull points to your advantage. And three, try to pull downhill if you have the option. In this case, we were forced to because of the gutter over there. So it kind of worked in our favor. Get this through. An emergency proclamation to change all exterior commercial lighting from white color to eerie yellow. What on earth would cause such an ordinance? And are these lights even still gonna be usable? 